Hello guys, so my name's Mark and I was just going to give you a quick intro into this great skirmish game called Baron's War. Um, it's a very small scale uh, skirmish game, it's not a great big uh, rank and flank battle game, you're not going to fight the Battle of Eversham or uh, the Siege of Lincoln with it. It's 20 to 40 miniatures and it's played on a 3x4 table. Uh, there's an excellent range of miniatures from footsore miniatures sculpted mostly by a guy called Paul Hicks. So the rules are written primarily to refight small engagements in the First Baron's War. Those of you who are not history buffs, uh, the First Baron's War is a, a civil war during the reign of King John and then later on in his, uh, in his son's reign. Uh, that's sort of 1215, it's sort of the time after Magna Carta and uh, King John goes back on all his promises and a bloody civil war breaks out between him and his barons, the first barons war, 1215 to 1217. So the way the game works is uh, you, you buy your units um, up to a certain allotted set of points, so it's set up to play between 500 and 1000 points, quite often 700 gives you a good two hour game. Um, it's an alternate activation game, so each unit, each turn will operate once, maybe twice if you give them an order. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll just talk you through how the mechanics of the game work. So the rules were written by a guy called Andy Hobday, who's got a long history in writing rule sets, Test of Honor, he also used to work for Games Workshop, like many games designers have. Uh, the main rule book is the Baron's War one. And that gives you your basic uh, troop types to cover that period of the First Baron's War. There's been two published uh, editions. You've got uh, Death and Taxes, which uh, this is not only the period of the Baron's War, but it's also the, the legendary period of Robin Hood and his Merry Men. And you've got lists that cover that. There's also a campaign setting. And the most recent one is Outremer, which uh, covers the time of the, the first, second, third crusade. The way the game works is that you have groups of warriors. Each unit will have a stat line. Across this stat line here, the arrow is movement. The crossed blades is your combat stats. Uh, if there's two, such as in uh, Bowman here, the first one is your long range, and the next stat is the short range. For archery, it's 20 is long range and 10 is short range. It's a die 10 system, so these are the numbers that you would need on a die 10 to hit. The shield is your defense value. The lower the number, the better you've, chance you've got of saving, and that indicates better armor. So it can go from no armor at all, to padded and leather, and right through to mail. The flag is your morale roll, so that would be the number that you would need to pass a morale check. And then the next little arrow with circles around it, that's a command range. So your commanders can have uh, extra actions in a turn. They can give orders or they can move twice themselves. The next is the points value. So when you're building up a unit, what you're best doing is you start with one guy you decide at what level of skill they're at and troops can either be green which is your basic um, rubbish troops that don't really know what they're doing and then you've got levy troops which are irregular and then you can go to regular and veteran veteran are your top class guys and obviously the better they are the more points it costs so if we were going to have some regular archers they are 16 points. If you want to add things to them, so for instance, you can add leather armor to regular archers, then that would add to that number, that would be 17. So each of these guys would then cost you 17 points. And if you have a unit of say eight, then that would just be 17 times eight. I'll let you do the maths. Each of your units, if they're infantry, they have to be a minimum size of three. There is no maximum size. The maximum size is pretty much indicated by they have to be in coherency. What that means is they have to be in a bubble of two inches from the center guy. 
So that sort of limits you down to really a maximum. You struggle if you get to sort of nine or 10 to keep everybody in that little bubble around him. For cavalry, it's a slightly bigger bubble and you can have a minimum of, tr of two troops. Right, so how do you buy commanders? You have to have at least one in your army and there's different types. So you can have a mounted baron, a dismounted baron, you can have a lord, mounted or dismounted, and you can also have what's called a veteran sergeant. Now the way this works is, like with your normal troops, you have to decide on what level of experience they are. So let's imagine we're taking this guy here. He is going to be my mounted baron. A mounted baron, I'm going to make him regular, that's 47 points. If you look down the list, there's also lots of things that you can add or take away. You can change his weapon options, give him a lance, you can uh, take him off a war horse, you can take the bard in off his horses, all sorts of different options. So we're going to keep him with his sword, we're going to add a shield, and a medium shield is three points, so suddenly he is now 50 points. Now I want this guy to be a tank. Now the medieval tanks on the battlefield are knights on war horses. In this game, war horses are very, very effective. A war horse in Barden is going to cost you an extra 13 points. So now he's suddenly gone from 47 plus three for his shield to another 13 points he is now 63 points. You need to place him in a unit. So let's imagine I've bought three regular knights for him. So I'm going to place him in that unit. I'm also going to spend extra points on him to convert up some of these guys to give him extra bonuses. So each commander has a radius of about six inches, six inches from him, not from his unit, from him. And, and that six inch radius allows him to give commands to increase people's morale, add dice into the mix. I want more than that, I want more than six inches. Because he is a uh, regular Baron, I can buy a banner. So by spending the extra points, nine points on him, it allows me to convert one of these knights to a banner bearer. I'm also, for extra uh, morale bonus, I'm going to add in a priest. And the priest will cost me another five points. Once I've done that, I can place him in the unit and it is now a unit of four.